War is becoming the norm. It's becoming commonplace. A group of nuns fighting for peace, how this demonstration ended. I want to go back home. I want to go back to my life. An impassioned plea by an American at her murder appeal, wanting her ordeal to end. No baseball played at Wrigley on Saturday, instead a popular movie that inspired a cult following. I'm taking the day off. Now get dressed and come on over. And new research has scientists believe in why songs like this are so catchy. Your independent news network starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to INN News. I'm Mike Mickle. This week is the 10th anniversary of the start of the Afghanistan war. Dozens of demonstrators gathered at Offutt Air Base in Nebraska to protest that war. As Kirk Casper from our affiliate KPTM reports, this was a peaceful demonstration fighting for peaceful actions. And it's not the answer. War does not provoke peace. Sister Marion Klusserman is one of dozens who protested in front of Offutt Air Force Base. She is tired of war. Words have not been sufficient to convince the people that war is not the answer, that it's plain insanity. Sisters of Franciscans and other peace organizations are protesting American warfare in Afghanistan and Iraq, just to name a few. War is becoming the norm. It's becoming commonplace. We want peace here. Katie Belt is also protesting. She and her classmates at Briarcliff drove all the way down fighting for this cause. We don't want these nuclear weapons to be used, but they're still spending the money on them, or that money could be going to a better cause to help the poor with shelter, food, clothing. Signs like this one show the group's message, but as protesters say, it's not just about spreading their words. I don't know what else to do besides with my body to say, no, this is not the way to go. Three people will attempt to cross this white line, and once they do, they will be trespassing onto government property. That's when Offutt officials will give them a warning to get back. And if they don't, they will face further punishment. I order the commander, Offutt Air Force Base, I order you to disperse. Sister Clusterman and two others were taken into custody. As the sisters from Franciscan say, their message was heard. Peacemaking is patriotic. Kirk Casper reporting for INN News. It is a federal offense to trespass on government property. The three could face up to six months in federal prison. The Iowa Franciscan Sisters believe that won't happen. It's been 16 years ago today since O.J. Simpson was acquitted of murdering his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. The trial lasted more than nine months. Simpson was uh, subsequently found liable for damages. In a civil trial, he's now serving time for a robbery in Las Vegas. We're awaiting a verdict in the Amanda Knox murder trial. She gave the speech of her life in an Italian courtroom earlier today. I want to go back home. I want to go back to my life. I don't want to be punished. To have my life, my future taken away from me for things that I haven't committed. In four years, I've lost my friends in the most terrible and unexplainable way. Knox is appealing her 2009 murder conviction of then roommate, 21-year-old British student Meredith Kircher. Two judges and six jurors will make the decision they could set her free or sentence her to life in prison. A ruling is expected either today or tomorrow. The losing side can appeal the jury's decision to Italy's highest court. Time for global news now. A second typhoon in one week pounded the Philippines over the weekend. The heavy rains from this most recent storm caused severe flooding. It's blamed for at least one death. About three million Filipinos have been impacted by the two typhoons. People are in need of food and water and they're leaving to look for food and supplies. A mole exposition kicked off in Mexico City over the weekend, attracting thousands of visitors from at home or abroad. This year is the 35th session of the annual event. The 22-day celebration started on Saturday, celebrating the special sauce. Mole dates back to the Aztecan age. It's made with many ingredients, such as pepper, onion, garlic, cumin, caraway, cinnamon, sesame, various nut kernels, 
and a little meat juice. Something itsy bitsy and teeny weeny attracted a big crowd on an Australian beach. You're looking at the new Guinness World Record for the largest bikini parade. 357 women helped claim the title on the Gold Coast in Queensland yesterday. The long line of women proved to be a little distracting for some. The old record was set last year in the Cayman Islands with 331 bikini wearers. And that's your Global News Now. Well, Alabama's new immigration law is now in effect, and it is the toughest in the country. It's causing some people frustration and longer wait times at places where ID is required. Lisa Blackwell from our Montgomery affiliate, WNCF, has more. Montgomery resident Dan Taylor says he likes to renew his tags in person. He says he prefers that method over mailing or renewing online. When he left his house, he said he never expected to literally get the runaround. Dan Taylor says all he wanted to do was renew his car tags and his wife's car tags. But he says the minute he walked in the door of the license renewal facility, he was told because of the new immigration law, he needed more information. They informed me that I would have to uh, have my wife's driver's license and a, uh, a form filled out to show that I had power of attorney. And so I questioned them about my wife's driver's license being on file. I could give her the, give them the driver's license number, the social security number. They informed me no, that that was not uh, acceptable, that I'd have to have this form filled out. The form is a power of attorney that requires the tag owner's signature and two witnesses to process the transaction. He was also told he needed it notarized. Taylor said he had no idea he was going to have this much trouble. I was just dumbfounded by this. I was shocked. So he headed downtown and ultimately ended up in front of the chief clerk of the Montgomery County Probate Court. Turns out Taylor doesn't need his form notarized, but he does need two witnesses. Chief Clerk Wells Robinson says the new law has created new challenges for his office. There are ways that we're working with people. Uh, power of attorney is one way to uh, allow them to bring in documentation for others. But based on the law, we have to confirm everyone's nationality uh, up front. Governor Robert Bentley announced the new AL Verify program, which is designed to help verify a person's legality faster. The license renewal staff uses it, and it works for online renewals, but if you're renewing in person for another person, you still need the power of attorney. If they're not the person whose name is on the title, uh, we have to uh, do certain things to verify their nationality, and the uh, power of attorney helps us execute that. Taylor and others say the new requirements are taking more time out of their day. It is very inconvenient, especially now that I'm looking for a job and the, the gas that it takes to get to and from all these places back and forth when all it is is a simple tag renewal, just like we've done every year in the, in the previous past. Robinson says in the case where there are two names on the title, then the one individual can appear in person and bring a photocopy of the other person's identification to obtain a tag. Robinson says the best way for people to renew, especially for the elderly, is online. The web-based renewal process incorporates the AL Verify information so that if you can't appear at the license renewal counter in person, you don't have to get a power of attorney. Lisa Blackwell reporting for INN News. Well, doctors say they want the man who shot President Ronald Reagan released from the mental hospital. John Hinckley Jr. shot President Reagan in 1981. He was later found not guilty by reason of insanity, and he's been in a mental hospital ever since. Now 56 years old, doctors say Hinckley is no longer a threat. They want him to live with or near his mother. He spent long visits with her over the past few years with little supervision. Prosecutors, however, say he's still a threat, and they want him to remain where he is. Thousands gathered to see the Navy commission its newest destroyer. It happened in Key West, Florida. The 509-foot-long USS Spruance cost $1.2 billion. It will carry Tomahawk cruise missiles and two helicopters. The ship is named for Admiral Raymond Spruance, who commanded aircraft carriers during the Battle of Midway in World War II. The Spruance will be based in San Diego. A high school football game ends in a big fight. Take a look at this in Sacramento, California on Friday. Rivals McClatchy and Kennedy High took to the field. With five minutes left, McClatchy leading 14 to nothing, it appears someone threw a punch. Then nearly everyone jumped into it. Someone punched a coach in the face. The rest of the game was canceled. School administrators are reviewing the video to see exactly which players were involved. 
University of Florida researchers working with the USDA believe they're on the right track to manage cat populations. George Solis from our affiliate GTN shows us how and why some are excited about a new contraceptive. I was absolutely delighted. I've been waiting a lifetime. Alachua County Animal Services Director David Flagler says managing feral cat populations feels like a never-ending task. We deal with a lot of incidents where people are scratched or are bitten by these, uh, these animals. But there's new hope. U of researchers, in collaboration with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, have discovered that the use of a drug called Gonicon can help control a feral cat population that experts say is upwards of 50 million in the U.S. This is a very exciting discovery for cats because it's the first time that a single treatment has ever been shown to cause multi-year infertility. This is very important because cats in the wild typically can be handled only once. Research has shown the vaccine works up to five years, the average lifespan of a feral cat. Experts say the research has promised, as it's a non-lethal method of animal control, that may be less expensive than spaying or neutering. So developing a less technical and less expensive alternative contraceptive, such as a vaccine for cats, would be very powerful in increasing our ability to control their numbers. Researchers say the vaccine has proven effective against other feral animals like horses and bison. We know that we have a serious pet overpopulation problem. One of the populations that is most difficult for us to control is the free-ranging pets. Officials hope the vaccine will be the end of the catastrophic numbers of feral cats once and for all. George Solis reporting for INN News. Now, researchers say the vaccine is only a temporary sterilization. They hope to research that science further. Well, economic times are unhealthy, and so are many of you. The link between the two. Plus a love for Mickey, Donald, Goofy, and all the gang that's now spanned generations. More on a big celebration at Disney World. And why there was no guessing where Ferris Bueller was this weekend. Bueller. 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 Ferris and the gang back at Wrigley Field coming up on INN.